Good morning. Uh, my name is Dick Cicchini. I will be the presenter. It's a great introduction to things that uh, you're looking for and give you a little technical uh, understanding and a little insight into uh, what you uh, may be uh, that you want to buy or, or how you want to sell the product. Uh, let me get going here. Uh, what you need to know when buying iSCSI storage is uh, introduction to IPSAN. Okay, so how does iSCSI work? Well, iSCSI is a protocol that's layered on top of the internet protocol. That's the, the coin term you'll hear me throughout this presentation, IPSAN, to differentiate it from fiber channel uh, stand. So what it is is the iSCSI protocol carries the standard set of uh, SCSI commands the same commands that are used in fiber channel uh, communications as well as uh, SCSI drives that have been around since the uh, late 80s, maybe the yeah, late 80s. Uh, so they didn't have to reinvent a command structure, just create a, a uh, level of protocol that could transmit uh, these uh, things. You know, it also is independent, so across the network, uh, you're not fettered with the addition of the uh, TCP protocol. Instead, that's replaced with the iSCSI protocol. Now, <clears throat> the net effect is this, uh, which is a little bit different um, than a fiber channel product. Uh, a fiber channel product presents a RAID set or a portion of a RAID set as a physical device uh, to a system. Uh, to a server, most particularly. Now, iSCSI does the exact same thing, and it's a block-level protocol, but it uses a uh, software vehicle in the operating system called an, an initiator. Now, there are different initiators for different operating systems. Microsoft has their own initiator that's free and standard uh, for all operating systems since XP and Server 2000 up. Uh, there are some third-party offerings that are available. And virtually all of the Linux operating systems have uh, multiple iSCSI initiators available. Uh, AIX, um, Intel, uh, U, uh, HP UX also have initiators uh, as well. So it's very well distributed, and the iSCSI subsystems can be used in a mixed environment. What an initiator does is it takes a presented volume from an appliance or an iSCSI storage device and it says, oh, here's, um, here's a free pool of space that's being given to me. And it works as the intermediate vehicle to say, I want to present this to my system. So in the world of, uh, we'll take Microsoft as the best example, the initiator sees two terabytes that's being presented from a uh, iSCSI storage device and gives it to the disk management services where it sees it as uh, a physical device and you would uh, format it and assign a drive level to it, drive number to it. So it would be drive D, E, F, G. Uh, at that point, the, op the server operating system or XP operating system views it as a physical device and you'll treat it as a physical device. It will be for all intent and purposes, a real direct detached hard drive that's running in a block mode of data transfer. Dick, I have a question for you. Yes. Can an iSCSI device be a dynamic disk? Yes and no. Um, uh, for people, uh, if we have Linux people here, dynamic disk is a uh, uh, change of the device type that enables additional features. Uh, if you were running uh, pre-2008, no, it uh, will not uh, allow it to be a dynamic disk. Uh, however, Windows Server 2008 and newer as well as uh, Vista 7 allow it to become, a, you can, once it's in there, you can change it to a dynamic disk. And the dynamic disk, uh, just a little background, gives you the ability to take advantage of features uh, such as uh, drive concatenation. You can take multiple physical drives that are presented in Disk Manager and make them look like a single physical disk. Uh, you can do mirroring. Uh, you can also stripe 
uh, and create RAID 5 sets or RAID 0 sets uh, using multiple physical devices as presented. Now, when I say physical devices presented, I mean I could have multiple iSCSI devices attached through that initiator and you could actually concatenate them into larger volumes where you could stripe across them with parity if you wanted to do it at an operating system level. 